On June 6th, through the camera angles on the rocket with the support of Starlink, we once again witnessed another miracle created by SpaceX with their giant rocket Starship. Many of you told me you wanted to see the landing from a different angle. So now, let's enjoy it. Very impressive, right? These landing scenes give us plenty to discuss today, along with some fascinating revelations from Elon Musk. So if you're ready, let's ship it and get started. What does that even mean? Firstly, let's talk about the B-11 landing process. As you just saw in the video, when B-11 approached the landing site, it passed through a small cloud. Immediately after that, B-11's engines activated to begin the deceleration process. According to the official live feed, this moment occurred at T plus 7 minutes 9 seconds. The three inner engines turned on first, followed by the 10 middle engines. But one middle engine failed. However, this did not significantly impact the landing process. A few seconds later, when the booster nearly touched the water surface, the middle engines completed their task and shut down, leaving only the three inner engines working. After that, B-11 landed softly with the same view as in the live show. Unfortunately, we couldn't watch the moment B-11 hit the water from the outside because the camera angle suddenly changed. With the new view angle of the landing, I believe you all noticed two outstanding highlights. The first I want to talk about is the fire on one side of the booster. This is quite unusual, and I assume it comes from the damaged engine that I just mentioned. Perhaps some system in this engine failed, leading to a fuel leak. When the engine was activated to land, the fire encountered the leaked fuel and ignited. Luckily, this happened when B-11's journey was almost over, so it didn't cause too much impact. However, to achieve a perfect flight, SpaceX still needs to research and upgrade its engine system. This was the second engine to fail in this flight following the failure of an engine in the outer ring earlier. This is crucial because the goal of SpaceX's next flight is to land the booster using the Mechazilla arm. The second highlight I want to talk about is SpaceX's strides in the landing attempt. You can see that thanks to the engine and grid fins, B-11 was able to maintain a vertical landing, something not every organization can achieve. This immediately reminds me of the Falcon 9 boosters. At first, the Falcon 9's vertical landings were similar to this B-11 landing, but not quite as smooth. However, SpaceX mastered it and now performs these landings weekly. It feels like they're starting a similar journey with Starship. To be more certain, Elon Musk said in a tweet that booster landing was on target. He also claimed, Starship booster makes soft landing in water, next landing will be caught by the tower arms. More than ever, I have great hope for the next Starship success. Please leave a like, share the video, and subscribe to the channel to once again congratulate SpaceX on their recent great effort and to stay tuned for their next feats. Not only from the new view, but the success of the recent booster landing is also shown by the flight data. Before the landing engine was activated, B-11 was at an altitude of 2 kilometers, with a flight speed of more than 1200 kilometers per hour. After only 18 seconds at T plus 7 minutes 27 seconds, when B-11 touched the water, the flight speed was only 9 kilometers per hour. In such a short amount of time, the engines performed excellently in decelerating for landing. This is a big stride compared to Flight 3. In that flight, when B-10 was below an altitude of 1 kilometer, the flight speed was still over 1100 kilometers per hour, which is why it failed to land. Indeed, SpaceX has impressed us with their development. Once the landing ability is proven, I believe SpaceX is fully capable of returning the booster to Starbase on the next flight. Do you agree with my opinion? Please, let me know with a yes or a no in the comment section down below. That was a great ending for B-11. And now, let's turn our attention to a much more dramatic journey from its companion, S-29. Honestly, it was wonderful to witness once again the moment of Starship's re-entry after its first time in March. We can see that the first re-entry period went quite smoothly, and when it lasted longer compared to last time, we can be confident that it is a sign of progress. But then a problem suddenly occurred. Heat shield issues caused the ship's sensitive part, the flap, to catch fire. As a result, debris and burned ash from the flap obscured our view of the subsequent landing. I believe many of you were also eagerly awaiting for another angle to witness this moment. Fortunately, the video at the beginning partly shows that. This is a fantastic video created by the Space Engineer team, so on behalf of my team and the audience, I would like to extend a big thank you to your team for this great effort. Alrighty then, 
Let's take a look at the S29 landing simulated video. When the fire was removed, we can see that the flap was seriously damaged. Almost the lower part of the flap was affected, and we can also observe that the internal details of the flap have been exposed. Even at the T plus 1 hour 5 minute 46 second stage, one of the two connections between the flap and the ship was broken, leaving the flap attached to the ship with only one remaining connection. This caused the flap to slide forward. In fact, when reviewing the live video, we can discern this through the blurry view of the camera. Amazingly, the flap was still able to accompany the ship for the remaining period. But from the video, we can see that even though the flap has problems, the ship still operated stably. The ship's movement indicates that it is still executing a good landing flip. However, the issue with the flap causes a slight deviation in the ship's landing location. Specifically, Elon Musk stated, ship landing was several kilometers off due to flap damages. And in another revelation, he mentioned that the distance was about six kilometers. Fortunately, this distance is still within the exclusion zone, so it does not pose any danger to human and maritime vehicles. In conclusion, Musk still considers this a soft landing. Regardless, the problems still need to be resolved. SpaceX will have to address two immediate issues with the ship, the heat shield and the flap to achieve more comprehensive success in the next flight. Elon Musk discussed this extensively after the flight, stating that his team will promptly work on the heat shield and make important adjustments to the flap. With the rapid pace of their work, I believe they will soon demonstrate these improvements in the coming days. And when all the upgrades are completed, we'll once again be eagerly awaiting SpaceX's next step and its landing efforts. In Flight 5, while the Super Heavy will return to Starbase, the ship will still make a second splashdown attempt to ensure that all processes like re-entry, deceleration, and vertical landing are controlled. These efforts, combined with Super Heavy's landing at Starbase, will pave the way for the long-awaited prospect of the full landing of Starship by the Mechazilla arm the moment the world has been eagerly anticipating. Without delving too deeply into analysis, it's clear to see the immense significance of this landing method. <laughs> Once successful, SpaceX will swiftly repair, refurbish, and prepare Starship for its next flight. This rapid turnaround speed will surpass even the impressive rate currently achieved by the Falcon 9. A swift launch rate will enable SpaceX to expedite its goals, such as landing on the moon or colonizing Mars. But it's definitely not easy. According to many opinions, a two-stage landing or even just a super heavy landing would require a new addition, the new tower. With Super Heavy, we see it landed in the Gulf of Mexico after more than 7 minutes. If returning to Starbase, we would assume it would be about 10 to 15 minutes after liftoff. With that amount of time, the SpaceX team may not have enough time to prepare for catching the booster, so it'll be even more difficult if it has to cover the landing ship. That's why a new tower is so important. The two stages will be launched, returned, and caught by a tower system in a ready state. SpaceX could use the new tower to catch both stages, or it could only catch the booster while the ship would be caught by the existing tower. This will certainly increase the reliability of the landing process, avoiding risks and overloads with a single tower. Currently, the tower segment shipping process is reaching its final steps, with two segments along with the chopstick parts on their way to Texas. Once they arrive, they will be transferred to Starbase and then assembled at the designated location at the launch site to form the full stack. I believe construction could commence in mid to late July and be completed in about four months. While it's not certain yet, hopefully everything can be completed and ready before Flight 6. Then, we can witness the greatest moment of the aerospace industry in this century, the fully landed rocket caught by the chopstick. Well folks, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in, and as always, this has been Kevin from Great SpaceX. Until next time, keep looking up.